It's another item pertaining to intergovernmental relations under FOIA. 13.3 or 4. 13.4. What do we have for 13.3? Okay. Move to adopt the agenda as amended. Thank you, Phil. Good morning, Madam Mayor. Carried. I move that council uh, adopt the October 17th, 2012 administration meeting as uh, presented. Uh, there's one, uh, one thing that I'd like to change on that, please, and that's uh, in attendance on, under uh, the improvements. It's just showing uh, Councillor Pat Fuel uh, as Deputy Mayor, and at that time, uh, that wasn't the case. Okay. Okay, that. Oh, there were anything else? I heard it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the adoption of the Cumberland Seventh Two Thousand Twelve Organization Council for eight minutes. Good morning. Oh, there. Yes. Put a vote on that one. Uh, under 3.2. Yeah, if you do. No, I was here. <laughs> uh, under 3.2 council appointments. It uh, says Councilor Rocky Blockman as a designated representative to the shop for youth club. I believe that's Councilor Patrick. You no change? Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a minute and a little minutes. All favor? Okay. October 17th, 14th. I'm so happy you must have something on this one. I'm going to get a motion to adopt it if you don't have any to add to them. Move adoption of those. Uh, of those uh, minutes, uh, you were supposed to October 17, 2012, regular meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. You have a motion on there. Okay. Um, says the money. We um, don't have one for November. I don't know what's there. Next I have one for October 2012. Okay. I don't believe there's anyone here, so maybe I'll award it to me. <laughs> Since I lost the deputy mayor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have um, a little presentation. And I just wanted to grab the notes. For mm. Since 2008. Did you we call everybody 7.30 for this, and I'm just wondering, do you want to, do you want to, maybe they're going to come at 7.30? Sure, that's fine with me. And uh, we can just move on, because I, I know my people are not going to be here until later on either. Okay. And um, it just gives me and James out here, everybody. Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we'll just move right on. We'll hold that one and just move on. Um, bylaws, 6-1. Number 12 dash 19, South Bend Lake Estates, and last year, number 17. Your Worship, I think that Council uh, provides second reading to bylaw 12 dash 19. You all heard the motion, any questions? All there? Okay. Your Worship, I believe that Council provides third and final reading to bylaw 12 dash 19. You all heard the motion? All there? Okay. Well, uh, number 12-20, well, Bob Ranch, page 23. Your Worship, I move that Council provide second reading to bylaw 12-20. Now, here's the motion. Any questions? None. All there. Here is. And Your Worship, I would move to provide third and final reading to bylaw 12-20. Now, here's the motion. All there. Here is. Six three by 
suggestion to my fellow counselors the easiest way to deal with this is, is to one of the uh, in into uh, the uh, um, complaint forms that we have at our office and if they're handed over to our administration staff they know exactly who to go to and that that matter could have been actually dealt with uh, in hours rather than days and that's no fault of administration it's just that uh, if it goes to the wrong place then it's uh, then it's, uh, it, it, the right people aren't finding out about the issues Thank you. Any comments? No. <coughs> yes. Ah, yes. Your worship, uh, Councillor Best, are you still running Red Lakes then? Or are you stopping? No, I'm not. Thank you very much. <laughs> Actually, there's no, there's no change from Lakes, just to recall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Councillor Best, 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 Councillor I have written here too, you, sir. Come for you. Uh, that's me, Your Worship. Um, yesterday we had our board meeting, and there are a couple of things that came up as far as um, expenses that we've incurred. I'm sure everybody realizes that with trying to get grants and things for our youth club to keep working and providing programs, then you get our accounts. And the question that the, uh, the youth board had for the club is that fire extinguishers were installed, and we as the youth club paid the full amount. And we're wondering if that is something that should have been included or part of the the, the, the site when we took the building over that it would have uh, appropriate and current fire extinguishers. It, it's a cost of over eight hundred dollars. So we're wondering if that if there's a chance that that can be credited back or paid back to us. And the other question that came up tied to that as well as things like caretaking is. Um, how to split it between the use of Golden Hills for the Anchors program and uh, the use of the Youth Club and its programs in the same building. So basically we're looking for some uh, some help or some input as far as the cost of the extinguishers that we incur. And the last thing tied to that as far as the physical plant is the furnace is, is running very, very loud and it sounds really bad. So that was one thing they wanted me to mention as well. So those are the two things, I guess, towards administration to see if we can look at them. Go ahead. I'll call on Jesse. 
Because <laughs> I saw him smiling there, so. Oh, smiling. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's my opinion. I believe the fire extinguisher should be covered by the town as the owner of the facility and uh, as a provision to the users of the facility. We do, we do that at the library at the Lumber Center so that uh, those funds should be reimbursed to the Great. So is that something that, um, if I do a chair to them, is that something that would come in the check to the youth club, or how does that work? Yeah, we would do, uh, if they can provide us with an invoice, okay. then we'll just repay them. Yeah, I believe they have everything on file. And yes. then I can get in touch with them on the um, care tap taking and the furnace as well. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> That's it, Your Worship. <clears throat> Question, uh, Your Worship. Go ahead. To uh, I don't know if it's to the council fuel or to uh, to Jesse. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, those fire extinguishers. Uh, uh, are you are you uh, familiar with with what they install there? Is that the same that the town would have used? Uh, do they meet our specifications? I'm not familiar with what's been installed, but I believe Safe Blue would have done the installation. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, Safe Blue did come in and, and give us a good deal as far as the installation and the fire chief um, Neil as well came in and approved everything so everything is up and above board. Very good. Thank you. We're going to question on the board eight uh, one books about a food bank page thirty three. Thank you, Your Worship. Recently, in the city of Brooks, XLB, the major employer in the city, had their plant closed and 2,200 uh, employees were uh, affected by the closure. The population of the city is 14,000. The uh, Brooks Food Bank assists many residents in the area. And the town of Stratford made a contribution of $2,500 that was directed towards the food bank through the city of Brooks. We confirmed with the city of Brooks they are forwarding that amount and matching that amount for a total of $5,000 to the Brooks food bank. But only $2,500 per month? Correct. Right. Thank you. Any questions for the council? Use the communication. Sure. Yes, but just make a, make a comment that uh, it, it's unusual for us to approve uh, monies of this nature uh, prior to it coming to council. However, in this in this situation, the monies have to go uh, in order to be eligible for the uh, the uh, matching of funds. So, uh, um, although unusual, it was certainly something that uh, I I support and have no issue with. So I don't make a motion for acceptance of this. I so move. Thank you. All in favor? Great. Thank you. Why is my regional somebody project page 35? Mm -hmm. Ready to Uh, this, morning, this evening, I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about the <coughs> Water Smart initiative that is currently underway. <coughs> Excuse me. The, uh, rather than read through the uh, request for decision, I hope you all had a chance to review The um, uh, Water Smart folks and the groups that are involved with the Water Smart project are uh, again, requesting uh, for Strathmore to, uh, to join the group and, and participate in the stormwater initiative um, that they're developing. Uh, we have been at the table since this began as an observer and we were invited by the group to continue uh, as an observer with, uh, with the group that was a very, uh, was a very gracious offer from the group to continue with us to that even though we haven't contributed the funds that, uh, that they requested. Um, just as, a, I guess, some points of, uh, of clarity on this, just uh, for council's information. The, um, the initiative is, is definitely to create a, a regional stormwater system uh, with the major players being uh, Chestermere, WID, obviously, um, CRP, the City of Calgary, uh, 
among others, uh, Rocky View and Wheaton County are also uh, included as well. What we've been able to do uh, through our conversations internally and, and even externally with, uh, with the province uh, in the Alberta environment is, is we started to form our own uh, solution for this, um, the stormwater side of things. That is a uh, very significant um, project in itself to the town. Uh, approximately a $65 million project uh, to manage stormwater independently of, uh, of any outside bodies like the WID or, uh, or otherwise. So it is a very costly endeavor um, and it would be largely funded through off-site levies and, uh, and, and ultimately potentially taxation depending on how our current agreement with the WID goes into the next uh, round of negotiations. So, um, within that $65 million uh, project, we've identified uh, a portion of the town's stormwater flows that would go into that, so there would be a, an aspect that would be uh, impacted by the, uh, current, the current population of the town. So what the WaterSmart folks are looking for is a contribution from the town of uh, $25,000, and what that basically would contribute towards is, um, is a uh, the development of regional plans, uh, both shared regional plans uh, between uh, municipalities that are at the table as well as um, <coughs> groups that uh, are uh, at the table but may not have a common interest with uh, staff. But uh, it goes towards the organization of uh, meetings as well as the um, drafting of the, of the, uh, of the what the solutions will be. And there's a phasing diagram that's uh, part of the package here that kind of shows we're currently in phase two uh, of this program. That's uh, the order of the basic program. Uh, this is a strategic option uh, summary and uh, identifying what the options are for regional stormwater. The $25,000 that the group are asking for in you know, the overall scheme of things, you know, we are to proceed with our own solution now. So, approximately that $65 million is, is a very small piece of, of what ultimately could be our cost and uh, where it would be uh, off-site would be eligible. In speaking to a number of developers, uh, they have indicated that you know, being a part of this group and being a part of the discussion, uh, they feel it's beneficial to the town to be um, part of a, a group of municipalities looking for funding. Uh, potentially from the province rather than being uh, an individual kind of on the outside looking for independent funding as opposed to working together with other regional municipalities and, uh, and even private organizations in WID. Um, I've had at least three uh, developers comment to me that they would be in favor of supporting this as part of that regional or that stormwater levy that, uh, that we're looking to. Uh, to start here in the, in the near future, the next go around with the bylaw for offsite levies. So I'm here this evening to, to I guess the uh, request from administration is that council consider contributing $25,000 to the Water Smart Initiative um, and that we participate as an active participant in the group um, and that uh, in doing so it's, it's administration's thought that there is an opportunity for us to reduce our ultimate cost for a stormwater solution through this initial cost of 25000 uh, and identifying a potential solution that may be better than what we've been able to identify ourselves through leveraging uh, some regional aspects as well as working with other groups to do that. Thank you. Any questions from council? Councilor Bell. Thank you. Uh, two of the questions actually, uh, just seen. Uh, one, I, I think it, um, if I'm reading this correctly, that we, we should be at the point of recommendation by the end of stage two. We would have options identified at the end of stage two, correct? And, and of course, that would in, involve an additional um, uh, amount of uh, 150000 um, In that regard, uh, the second question is, um, are you aware of any grants that uh, are available in uh, that we may be able to seek out um, to pay for this type of action? Just, I guess, uh, just for uh, information purposes, yes. the 150 that's on here, that's the current stage. So we would be contributing 25,000 to that 150. So oh, okay. we're within that. That 25,000 that was phase one. Uh, the WID actually paid that entire amount to get okay. control. 
and then now we're in, in the phase two. So, so at the end of the stage, we're looking at recommendations. We're looking at recommendations, and then we go into design and implementation. And, and what it, I mean, the worst case scenario is we reach the end of phase two, and we don't have a better solution than what we need to develop ourselves. Yeah. And I think the likelihood of that at this point is relatively small. Um, and uh, I think there is an opportunity to find a better solution if you're working with the group. Um, and then, obviously, with the implementation design or the design of alternatives or solutions, that would likely supersede kind of what we have identified as our own solution. So then, the stormwater levy, we'd be looking to amend that at that time if we have a different or better solution. Well, thank you, Your Worship, but uh, my question has just been answered. Thank you. Uh, your Worship, through the Chair to Jesse, so uh, at the end of stage two, uh, at the end of phase two, we're going to be in, into it for 150? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. Um, like I say, if we get to the end of stage two, and you know, unfortunately, if there's no better solution, worst case, we invested $25,000 in this and have arrived at no better solution. Okay. Um, we at that point have the option to say, thank you, uh, we'll proceed with our own alternative and, and leave the group with that if that's kind of what we decide is the best for the time. And so far we're not, I, I assume we're not uh, proceeding too far on what we're trying to do ourselves here? No, we, we've identified and had uh, conversations with environment related to um, kind of what we've been able to design initially and they are supporting it in principle. We've also discussed, you know, there's the opportunity that we can come up with a different solution that may be more cost effective to the uh, developers as well as to the town in the future. And they've acknowledged that, you know, in the interim, they're willing to work with us on an approval basis on a development by development uh, staging technique to, uh, to have a view of a solution that may be kind of changing as we get into this uh, a little further if we do Commit to us. I, I just wanted, wanted to to go back to something you said earlier that, that the the, uh, the payment from this will, will come from offsite levies and, and possibly taxation. The initial thought is that this the major benefiting party as part of the uh, part of this initiative would be uh, development. <coughs> We have an existing agreement with the WID that expires in 2016 for stormwater drainage. Um, we're anticipating working with the WID to renew that agreement, and we're def you know that would be definitely beneficial to the town. Um, however, in the event that um, terms and conditions of the new agreement are not agreeable to the town, we may be forced to look have a different solution, which would be ultimately building our own independent of the WID stormwater, for which a portion of that would fall on an existing town boundary because we have no discharge of stormwater ability uh, from town, other than to come up with our own solution. So well, but basically what we'd be looking at it is is the uh, the lot cost would be going up and, and possibly taxation going up. Yeah, we would definitely be aggressively pursuing some grant funding as a result based on the burden that would be placed on the existing town and, and you know, if, if, um, if we could reach an agreement. In initial discussions with the WID and conversations that we've had is, you know, they're looking to that 2016 year to be working with the town, uh, not against us in, in determining what those solutions are. So we almost have, you know, we're almost in this as it, as it is today because we have an agreement that's going to expire in four years, and, yeah. and we need to have a solution that ultimately we can transition to. And that's going to take some time as well. But if we see that it's not going to work, we need to have an alternative, or we don't have anywhere to take our stormwater or flooding down the street. Okay, thank you. Comfortable. Thank you. Uh, as much as I don't like the, uh, the, the way this whole thing is being presented, I think ultimately that would be the better of the of the two scenarios. Because uh, uh, I, I uh, really don't like the the, uh, the thought of what could happen in 2016 if we don't go along with this study and, and, and with, with this uh, uh, implementation of 
of, of the uh, uh, with the WAD and, and the other parties involved. Come to any any comments? No, I'm good. Um, I see where it says nine months or the second base. Oh, why are we doing nine months or six months? <laughs> uh, we are. Uh, yeah, we're still. There's still a lot of work. I think this nine months was very impressive. And one of the mentions that I had in the uh, agenda item was it's going to take some time. Um, this isn't going to happen overnight. And there's a lot of information that we need to compile and then determine what alternatives work regionally as opposed to independently. So I, I think uh, you know we're just starting to talk about timelines at this point. But um, you know I think we're going into 2013, uh, well into 2013. And uh, but um. I'm thinking that by the end of uh, the second quarter into the third quarter of 2013, that's the timeline for where we anticipate that we're ready to discuss solutions. If it's two, three, or four thousand dollars, it, it, it will only be uh, taken from an acre assessment, wouldn't it? Whatever the charge is, if it's, if it's four thousand dollars a lot, wouldn't that all come from an acre assessment, not taxes? It will depend on where we're at in four years. Uh, and that's ultimately I can see this being a phased approach uh, to it if, if, if we work together uh, in this and we can come to some agreement that there's a solution that will work for the current town as part of our existing agreement um, and uh, the new one um, we pay like currently we pay uh, conveyance charges and things like that to the WID for stormwater conveyance on an annual basis if we can work with the WID to amend the existing agreement, then some of that comes out of taxation for the current town. Uh, it's a very small percentage, and then the town has the um, annual levy that goes into stormwater as well for new uh, developments as, as growth occurs. So it'll be both, but the smaller portion is the taxation because uh, growth is intended to cover that uh, um, additional need in the future. And lastly, uh, the twenty-five thousand. We don't have that a lot of for in the budget. I don't think. Uh, uh, where, where are we at? Can okay, we wait till the first of the year? Uh, I think in the agenda, I might ask that it be funded through uh, financial stabilization for the time being, um, and then you know, I think administratively we have to work out how that could be refunded to the reserves through offsite levy. But I don't think they're in a rush for it. I mean, it's, it's, it's the first year is going to work. There, the talk right now with the WaterSmart folks is WaterSmart is going to invoice the WID and then the WID are going to invoice the members of the group. Uh, I've heard mention that it will be within the next month relative to the current members of the group. We can definitely ask that it be postponed, I would say, into the new year, but and then yeah. we could work that into the 2016 budget. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, just looking for a recommendation. Motion. When are we going to Well, so uh, you worship, would the motion then bring in the fact that we're going to be looking at it in the new year, or that we're going to be paying it in the new year? It could be. It, it could, but if, if, if they don't accept it, then uh, yeah, let's just. So we're looking at an as is motion then? Yeah. Yes. Can you worship? I would move the council support the regional stormwater project being coordinated by Water Smart and contribute the requested $25,000 to participate in the project with funds to be drawn from the Financial Stabilization Reserve and that the mayor and CAO are authorized to sign the agreement on behalf of the town. Do you want to make a any questions? Should we wish to have a probably amendment on that to January 2015? No, the administration don't want it. I just want to sign the check and do it. Thank you. Um, all there. Gary, I'm opposed. One opposed. Uh, eight three two twelve municipal collection center for work on building recycling. Page thirty nine. Annually, the Alberta Recycling Management Authority gives out an award uh, to basically three tiers of municipalities or uh, counties and districts that, uh, that demonstrate excellence in development and uh, environmentally safe operation of recycling uh, collection sites. Um, there are some uh, requirements, as uh, 
group as it relates to the award. And it basically is that the sites have to collect electronics, they must collect paint, and they must collect tires, all of which uh, are struck on the site we do. Uh, the site must also basically be uh, perceived as environmentally and, and uh, environmentally safe as well as uh, um, uh, health and, and occupationally safe as well. And uh, basically this award is, is given uh, annually by uh, based on a review of the field manager, the <coughs> services manager with Alberta Recycling Service. I'm proud, I'm very proud to announce that this year uh, the town of Strathmore has been selected as a 2012 uh, collection site award of excellence winner for municipalities with a population of between 5,000 and 25,000. Um, information that we received uh, when we did uh, accept the award was that there are over 400 sites in Alberta that are considered for this award. Uh, in this category within 5,000 to, uh, to 25,000. So um, it's an excellent accomplishment for the town uh, of Strathmore in, in terms of the users that use the facility and their contribution to keeping it uh, safe and environmentally responsible. And it's also a very definite credit to the uh, operators and the, uh, the staff that we have at Recycle here and their contribution to the, uh, to the operation. So just wanted to extend congratulations to the town and, uh, and definitely also the recycling facility staff uh, for this outstanding achievement. Absolutely. Well done. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> and library board meeting for library board funding. 843. Mr. Ocean Funds has received um, two requests for appointment to the library board for term of one year. This request has been received by Mr. Sean McLaughlin and Mr. Sean Carlson. So, administration is recommending that council appoint um, both both Sean's to the library board for term of one year. Thank you. Any questions, council? Uh, to the chair, uh, to administration, um, are they? Uh, these people both uh on Strasmar uh, residents. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Motion. Motion to move to the Sean McLaughlin and Sean Palliston to the Strathmore Library Board for two of one year. Can we have a motion? Any board residents are not on the board? So your motion, if I could just ask um, if there's a chance we could go back to the citizen of the month for October. I see that my person is here and I'd be able to make my presentation now if she has to go somewhere. Okay. She probably really wants to go somewhere. I'd be able to come right now. Okay. <laughs> is that okay? Yes, okay. I'll do my intro first. I can see this way. You will cry. Uh, <laughs> since about 2008, there have been many people continually trying to run affordable educational and recreational programs for youth. These people have put in a great many volunteer hours, and this continues to this day. We have an active board, and the town of Strathmore is graciously leasing us the youth center, and improvements in equipment and furniture have been added. Youth programs have been running after school and during our summer months now. These volunteers put in hours on the board and policy and decision making, but are also right in the trenches working for and with the youth. Our most recent event for teenage youth has been a, a youth outing dance, which is broken the ice and is well attended. We're also planning help for kids with homework. We have a teen program called Fusion, which I thought I'd mention tonight in case some of you gentlemen on the council are interested. We're, we have a program called Fusion, which is hosting a movie night tomorrow at the Youth Center for all the Twilight fans. I know Councillor Silver was a big deal. I am very glad to be on the Youth Club board, and I've seen the great work and effort being done. I'm proud to name the volunteers of the Youth Club of Strathmore's October Citizen of the Month. And I'd like to introduce Shannon Zeeden, who is accepting the award on behalf of the many volunteers we have. She's been essential to program planning and acquiring funding and grants for our Youth Club. She's, she is so good, in fact, that she's gone from being a volunteer and our board has just hired her to continue on and increase our efforts in Strathmore. The East Club of Strathmore is really trying to provide exceptional activities for you, but also very affordable. So on behalf of the town of Strathmore, I'd like to name the many volunteers of the Youth Club of Strathmore as October 6th of the month 
and then ask Shannon's image in pencil and accept this award. In the last several months, we've had more discussions on downtown beautification. I think we all support somehow see the downtown beautified. My recommendation is, for example, on the businesses themselves. If there's not ready or whatever, it'd be the business owners. Sidewalks, um, decorative lighting, those kinds of things would be up to the town. Now there's two or three options. Uh, first of all, the town could do most of it in-house and maybe hire a landscape architect to help us a bit and get something put together in the next half year. Another possibility is to have the Chamber of Commerce involved um, where they work with us on it. Or another option, I guess even a third, is that we say to the chamber, you work on it, a fourth list of proposals, show them to us, we'll look at it, and we'll decide. And to me, I think probably the best is to at least have the chamber partly involved, because it is their business people and all, and uh, put together a plan, 
well, that's got a little bit of professional help. But the planning department can do quite a bit of it. So that's basically what I'm right now. Because uh, coming up on November the 17th is our budget workshop, and we'll be talking more about things at that time. But I felt for the public tonight in particular, we should talk about there's some options we need to see where we're going. Actually, I have a, a short uh, uh, statement to make, Your Worship, uh, with some information and, and to uh, uh, to augment that with a couple of uh, uh, motions. Um, I'm uh, uh, for a number of reasons. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I, I, although I agree that uh, uh, the chamber could be used as, uh, as as someone to provide information. I don't. Uh, I, I don't think I, I can agree with them. Handling this issue, I, I, I much prefer this to be uh, dealt with by our planning department. But at any rate, I'll, I'll just read uh, s some of what I pre prepared here. Uh, uh, myself and uh, Councilor Blockman have been uh, working on this for a bit. So, um, as the report I've attached to for everybody and the, and the public, it's suspected that all of Council will agree that that our downtown is in need of improvement. Consistently, trade shows, which we are show, which we're, where we are showcasing our town, initiate comments from potential clients. This is one of the most unattractive parts of our town. It is suggested that municipalities downtown should be a symbol of community economic health, partnership between the private and the public sector, local quality of life, community pride, and community history. At one time or another, every member of this council spoke of the need to either revitalize or beautify the downtown area. In fact, some even included one or two of those goals as part of their election platform. As both Councillors Sobel and Blockland feel stru uh, felt strongly about this issue, they presented a proposal at Council at the 2012 workshop. The two-page information package which included a proposed sketch of a possible scenario and an information page was shown to all Council members and permission was requested to share this information with our second editor downtown business people. Uh, that information letter uh, that went to downtown business people is, uh, is attached to this uh, package and the uh, council did uh, approve this project uh, and subsequently each business owner and property owner along 2nd Avenue was either personally contacted or provided with a copy of the aforementioned sketch and letter. It was clear that all business owners and managers are in favor of some beautification program for the downtown area. Most, the vast majority, expressed concerns with consistent departure of businesses from the downtown area in the absence of any consistent theme. Many complained about the absence of pride evident by the way businesses failed to maintain their properties. The vast majority also felt that the loss of 37 parking stalls, a result of the suggested removal of angle parking stalls on the north side to provide for median, would mean the end of our downtown. Although it was never intended to turn this issue into a public debate, this is exactly what has occurred. It's abundantly clear, however, that in spite of all the newspaper articles, letters to the editors, Facebook comments, unqualified polls, and verbal comments, a relatively small group of people have been heard from. The vast majority of concerns that were expressed focus on the lost parking spaces. This has this also has been, however, substantial there, there I'm sorry, there also has been, however, substantial support from Strathmore residents for the idea of changing the angle parking on the north side of Second Avenue and replacing it with parallel parking in the median. Those in favor generally feel that walking a little extra is worth the price of having an attractive and people-friendly downtown. In order to effectively examine this issue, it's essential that there be public and downtown business consultation. It's also recommended that the following groups may or should be consulted with. HEAL, which, uh, and this group has great information on walkability. The Downtown Calgary Association, they possess a wealth of information and are quite willing to share it. Communities in Bloom, other municipalities dealing with this, this issue, and the Strathmore Chamber of Commerce. A research into various grants that could augment costs for this project must be examined. A number of uh, uh, observations and suggestions that I'm not going to uh, go into, but they're basically because they were personal observations and suggestions by, by, by both uh, Councillor Lockton and myself. Um, but it's felt that uh, in an effort to provide our downtown with an identity, it's necessary to use both aggressive branding and limited architect architectural controls over it. And for that reason, my first motion, uh, Your Worship, is uh, that it be moved that a district 
a distinct and specific area for the Strathmore Downtown District to be utilized by creating an overlay for this district. I know it's probably out of order and myself here. I, uh, I should have turned the chair over to uh, Deputy Mayor, Councillor, if you feel that right away, uh, since I own a property downtown and I'm um, not clear in my mind whether I'm in conflict or not, and I just want to turn the chair over that number to participate in the discussions on this matter. So, yeah, thanks, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I imagine there's some discussion. So, just uh, Councillor Sobel, if I could just again, that, that movement or that motion you made is the board uh, that you've got here? That's correct. That's uh, for uh, the first motion, you, uh, Your Worship. Okay, so we've heard the motion. Is there any discussion? Councilor, do you have anything you'd like to add, Councilor Yeah, to the chair, to Councilor Sobel. <clears throat> now, um, I, I, I agree with uh, the uh, uh, downtown beautification uh, that, that needs um, uh, to be addressed. Um, now, I see on their, on, on their cover sheet for your, your information package here, you, you still show that median on on, on there, and, and I'm, I'm I'm wondering uh, whether that is still part of the plan to for it to remain there, or are we talking about building uh, uh, beautification and, and and not street beautification? Thank you, uh, Councillor. I never suggested that was anywhere near being as intelligent as a planner, and and. Uh, uh, I, I, when, when we came up with this idea, this was one of possibly 20 uh, different ideas that, that uh, we thought of, and it was one that was uh, that was raised in order to uh, to uh, surface some discussion, and and as a possible uh, as a possible idea to, to basically show people what is possible uh, downtown. Uh, it's obvious this one's fraught with with, uh, with with issues and, and, and concerns. But what I'm trying to do is is, is get this to the professionals with, with some tools in the, in the toolbox. And then the only way I think would produce uh, would provide those tools, uh, those tools uh, so that they can start looking at a number of possibilities that would fit our our, uh, our downtown population uh, and and that the uh, the uh, uh, staff or residents would be uh, would be happy with as well. So the answer to your question is no. That that was that was never something that was ever intended to be uh, brought forth as a uh, uh, as a plan because uh, it was never uh, my intention to uh, to get into the planning business. So the meeting is not. We wouldn't. I, I mean, that maybe one that they, that 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 they come up with. Uh, I don't know. You know, to be honest with you. You'd be surprised. There's some fairly strong, substantial support for that that concept. But I mean, we're not here now. I want to turn this over to the professionals and see what you know, they think about the three uh, three ideas that we hadn't thought of that that would fit perfectly for our downtown area. But what if we were going to continue with another question? We're, we're basically focusing on 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 uh, a, um, uh, a theme for the uh, to to uh, to beautify the uh, the storefront to, to, to upgrade the facades on, on, on the buildings. It's, it's not more than we're focusing more on that than just on the, on the street. I, I'd like to give this over to administration for them to come back and give us the. Um, the information that they feel is relative to an overlay for the downtown area, including the specifics in regards to what area they be talking about. I'm aware that our deputy CAO has been working on an overlay plan for 10 years. Um, most of this work is done. It has never been uh, motioned by the council and has never been, therefore, uh, brought into, uh, into policy. I don't think it's very hard for uh, uh, it would be very hard for a, uh, a, a presentation by our deputy CAO to, to occur perhaps uh, before the end of this term uh, to uh, to demonstrate what uh, the benefits of an overlay are and what it would look like. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Councilor Best. Um, 
Council, so in, in your motion, you're, you say uh, a distinct and specific area. Can I ask where that is and what you're talking about? No, I, I, I don't have an answer to that, sir. But that's what that's what your motion says. Is that correct? Yeah, the, for, the motion is for administration to come back with proposals for an overlay and for them to recommend what specific area it would deal with. That's not what it says. What does it say? Well, it's, it's saying you move that, that a distinct and specific area for the Strathmore downtown be utilized by creating an overlay for the district. So if, if you're talking about a specific area, a distinct and specific area, then I'd like to know what areas you're talking about. Okay, I, I, I don't know how to uh, rephrase this, but I don't have an answer to that because I'm not doing that. I'm always, uh, my recommendation is that an overlay be brought in and it's administration's job to bring that in and to, to recommend what distinct area they're talking about. Uh, if I can interject, Councilor, so as part of your motion, would it uh, would it be helpful to uh, direct administration to specify what area in the downtown district would be would be looked at as far as an overlay? Well, we can do that, but. In order for an overlay to take place, it has to be an area. It has to be a specific area. Like, that's what an overlay is. It is defining a specific area. That's what an overlay does. And just for cl clarification, I don't want to be doing Or maybe, or maybe we can have our deputy CAO to make a comment on this further. Help. Yes, it is a specific area that we would um, identify. And then the overlay is a specific set of rules for that area, and it could be architectural controls, it could be streetscapes, it could be um, a number of items. So what we would probably do is bring um, a few suggestions forward with a specific set of rules for that area, and it would be it would be an overlay for that specific district. So in other words, um, when you were saying that part of this this motion then would be satisfied by the fact that you guys would be bringing forward the exact area and situation that this is going to be looked at. Okay, then, then, then what I would like is is uh, for this motion to to have uh, stricken um, that a distinct and specific area. I'd, I'd like that stricken because if if you're, if, if uh, administration is going to come back with that, that's fine. Otherwise, I I would like to know what what that area is because that's what it's saying right now is that you have a specific area that you're talking about. Councilor Rumpel, uh, through the chair, Councilor Sobel, um, and uh, I'm, I'm uh, wondering if, if we could um, make a friendly amendment to this motion and include the uh, the, the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce and, uh, and with, with administration uh, because the, uh, there's there's rather late work to be done here, and uh, I uh, seeing as the the, the chamber is the collective voice of the business community uh, uh, that we uh, uh, get them to, 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 to help with this sort of big old canvas, the, uh, the businesses, show, show them the, uh, the suggestions that, that we get from our staff. So that they, they take this out to the businesses and, and uh, uh, find out from the businesses what, 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 which one of the themes that they, they prefer and, and uh, how, how they want to move, move forward with that. If I could just answer something to you. Um, I think, if I've got this right, Councillor Silver, um, you are more leaning towards the idea that administration would designate the area, create some, um, some options and suggestions for the overlay for that district, and then that could be presented to Council and or by Chamber of Commerce. Well, excuse me for interrupting if I may, sir. Uh, your Worship. Thanks. <laughs> what if, if, if what, you know, what administration uh, recommend is not suitable for the business community? That's why I would like for it. For a, you know, to, yeah. just, just to provide the chamber with a few options. The chamber will probably have some options that, that they, because they've obviously been uh, working with this as well. And, uh, and then let them take it to the business community and, uh, 
actually the thing instead of our people going in there spending a whole bunch of time uh, trying trying to deal with the business community. That's not, that's not our purpose. Well, I, I don't. I, I think we can agree to disagree on that, uh, Councilor Rample. I think it is our business. But uh, I'm looking for a quarterback here, uh, and and our, team, our planners should be the quarterback on this thing. It, there's not only the Chamber of Commerce that, that should be consulted with. There's there's a whole bunch of private citizens that should be consulted with. There's uh, uh, communities in rural that should be consulted with. There's a whole bunch of different groups that I feel they should be consulted with. And when they come back with their proposals, and we we determine that they have not consulted with anybody, we can send planners back to uh, plan, plan back to do so. That's that's our job is to ensure that the proper consultation has been done i don't want to include that they have to they have to because if if chamber of commerce and uh not that they would ever do this but the chamber of commerce said you know we we, we don't want to get involved in this for some reason or another and i'm sure that that would be the case but if they were to do that then what where we left their planners because we've got a motion with ordering them to do that so i want to keep it i want to give them as, as much leeway with this as possible have them come back and then let's review what what the, what information they come back and uh and uh then we can question uh who they've consulted with you can respond uh, okay no they uh you mentioned the community and room and i have they have a specific call that is in this uh, but that is when once we get to streetscaping and, 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 and that, that part of it. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the dealing with the, with the businesses, with, with, with the buildings, with, with the, uh, the uh, facades of, on, on, on the, uh, in the particular area that we're going to and what we we'll recommend for it. Um, I, 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 I just feel that it would be very burdening for, uh, to, to have our uh, administrative staff go in there and try to put this together when they're not even the voice of the business community. Uh, we still have the final say in, in this, regardless of who, who puts this together. And I, I and, and don't get me wrong, I'd like our staff to be to be involved, and I don't want them to carry the ball. Okay, then uh, we'll take a comment from from the station. Just for everybody's information, this is it's a five. It would have to go through a public consultation process. So we would have to engage stakeholders who would include the downtown businesses, um, any residents who are involved, the chamber, communities in blue, any stakeholder. So it would, you would have to have a series of open houses. Um, and because it is an amendment to the land use bylaw, you'd also require a public hearing. It's, it's a statutory planning document. So you do have to go through the whole process. So I think probably everything that you talked about would already happen in the process. That only gets us to the to, to, to the start of it. Nothing has nothing has happened yet, but at okay. this point, no, we don't even have to proceed with it. But the overlay itself would be that specific set yeah. of yes. rules when it becomes a, a bylaw of a separate yes. district. And then, and then they have to, somebody has to go out. And 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 uh, uh, get the businesses involved. There's a, there's a, there's an investment from from the businesses uh, that uh, uh, because who's going to pay for this? If the businesses don't pay for it, who's going to pay for it? So so somebody has to go out there and and, and work this all out between each business. That uh, some some businesses have maybe a 60 foot front, some they might have a 100 foot front. So it's not going to be the same cost for each business. And, and who's going to go out there and collect the money? Who's going to, you know, going to order all the material? Uh, who's going to uh, do all this? You know, why, why would we, uh, our staff, have to be burdened with all of this? Okay, if I could just interject, I think we might be getting ahead of, ahead of ourselves in some of the discussion. I think we're just looking at a preliminary suggestion that's coming forward. And I think Councillor Best has been willing to make a, a comment, so we can come back to you and. and so. But your worship, uh, it's, it's, I understand both, all, all sides of this. 
to me right now, what I would like to see is rather than a motion just to have this referred to administration to come back to us. Um, motion, uh, because the, the motion as, as is, um, talking about distinct and specific areas is is, uh, is okay at best. And uh, I would rather see it uh, referred to administration to come back to us rather than, than being a, a motion as such. Or you would be worship. There's already a motion on the floor. On the uh, Councilor yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. I, uh, I think we're getting on the wrong track here. Uh, forcing, uh, if I understand some of the comments here, forcing businesses to upgrade their front of their buildings and whatever. Uh, that could take a long, long time. Look at some of our property uh, business owners uh, we have downtown. How long it's taken them to do something? Uh, this could take a long time. We're talking about downtown beautification, not beautifying somebody in front of a building. But I think if we can get an overlay downtown and, and get uh, get a theme going, I think one hand will work with the other one. And some of these uh, building owners, even though there might be absentee uh, citizens in town, I think things would slowly start to come around. This is not going to happen in the next six months. This might take six years or 10 years or 15 years. Thank you, Councilor Blockman. I finished up your report. I think uh, having, having said all this, uh, I talked to a, a citizen in town here that was instrumental in uh, working with the Downtown Business Association in Cochrane quite a few years ago, about 18 years ago, and uh, he's got a lot of good ideas in hand. And I think one thing he mentioned was uh, at some point in time we could set up a committee and look into this. Uh, between himself and uh, maybe a counselor and some other business owners, some citizens. I think we can get the ball rolling here. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is we've got to keep the ball rolling. We can't stop this. And I'm seriously asking counsel, uh, I'm seriously asking you counselors with, with my heart here to really understand the issues and the ramifications at stake. We as in, in counselors, so and myself have Worked at downtown, we spent a lot of time. We discussed the uh, beautification with almost all the business people downtown. We missed maybe a few that weren't in or out. Every business owner downtown agrees we have to do something. Something has to be done. Uh, obviously, they're not in favor of losing parking spots, but there's pros and cons on that on that issue. Uh, same with the median uh, down the middle of the street. There's pros and cons there too. It's, it's not written in stone where we were trying to get a median down the middle of Main Street. Uh, there's other things that could be done. All we're asking as counselors is for you to seriously consider this matter for the present and more importantly for the future. Uh, do, you, do you seriously want this downtown to look like this five, six, seven, eight years from now? Uh, there's lots of options for this project and it probably is a five to ten year project. Nothing is going to happen today or tomorrow, but at least give us a chance to keep this alive for administration to further explore all options and costs involved. Sure, it's going to cost money to look into this, but that's part of doing business. And more importantly, when uh, my last statement here, down the road, this is one step closer to a pre-road to the city status. Um, if, if I could interject here, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is a friendly amendment, but I'd like to just uh, bring this forward to you, Councillor Silva, and I'm wondering if so maybe in your initial motion could, could read something like this, if this would satisfy the councillors as far as our first motion to maybe move in this direction. Uh, what if it was worded something like, it is moved that a distinct and specific, specific area be designated for the town, downtown, Strathmore downtown district and that administration create an overlay for this district. That would then, that would then involve the administration coming up with an area that would be looked at as far as what would be revitalized and beautified and then they could also create that overlay present it to the various stakeholders and i know there's, there's concerns from council Rebel about you know uh meeting all the businesses but i'm wondering if that could also be achieved through things like an open house where all the people could meet in one location so i guess my initial question is would, could that be a, uh, an acceptable um, um friendly amendment to your, to your motion. Would that satisfy or would that push us in the right direction? Could you repeat it, please? It is moved that a distinct 